Good evening, art lovers. Shrouded in dust and clothed in darkness for the last 30 years, we offer you now an opportunity to again peruse the paintings, to ponder the mysteries of time, dimension, and the darker side of humanity, to glimpse the artifacts of a noted era in television and mystery genre history. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Night Gallery. I'm Leonard Nimoy, your modern-day curator. Please join me for an after-hours tour designed to reveal some of the gallery's long-held secrets. There's no admission fee, no requirement of membership, only a strong and abiding belief in the dark at the top of the stairs and things that go bump in the night. Good evening. Please come in. These little object dart that you see surrounding me, you won't find in your average art museum because these are unusual paintings in statuary that come to life or death, whatever the case may be, because this is the Night Gallery. It was indeed over 30 years ago that the original Night Gallery first opened for business, the brainchild of a slight, adamant man in a dark suit, a man who previously had taken us into the Twilight Zone. That man, Rod Serling, viewed the world in quite a unique manner and he dared to invite us for three, all too short seasons into his unusual world. But his invitation came with a warning. Don't touch the exhibited works, but very frequently, they touch back. He had a kind of a smirk on his face that he knew something that you didn't, and that he was gonna, you know, scare you or frighten you or make you, make you think in a fun way. And that's certainly the way it worked in the Twilight Zone. And, and you know, Night Gallery followed along that same that same way. It was different from Twilight Zone. You know, I think it was more what the French call fantastique. Rod Serling was so inventive; he could take so many, almost any uh, natural, normal circumstance, and and sort of turn it inside out, take it a different direction, and. Uh, and that's what, that's what I look forward to, seeing the show. And of course, when I was invited to be on it, that's uh, what I look forward to as an actor. Rod always took people into areas and explored things, though fictitiously written. Uh, he explored things that, that people experience quite a bit in one form or another. But nobody in those days had the guts to talk about it. Good evening. Of course, you're all here by invitation. But don't let it disturb you if these paintings, per se, don't happen to be your thing. These are rather special paintings, the kind of hanging generally put up with a noose. He wrote over one third of the segments, and it was a very unique show because uh, it encompassed science fiction, horror, and fantasy uh, in a way that had never been uh, done before on television. I was a tremendous fan of that show, and thought it was a really interesting, poignant, and searching look at the human condition. I thought it was a really amazing um, anthology series. He was very witty. He was extremely intelligent. He was a genius. I mean, he was very prolific. And, but, you know, he not only wrote a lot, but he, he, uh, he wrote a lot of excellent stuff. I was a big fan of Rod Serling and his work. And he, he was definitely into spooky stuff. And everybody loves spooky stuff. Oh, I adore it. It's, it, it's unreal and I like fantasy, especially harmless fantasy. Surprised? Well, I think certainly Rod Serling was part of what made it work. Uh, you know, his creativity and his, his genius. Inspired by chilling pictures, the gallery was a potent mix of horror, science fiction, and fantasy. A maniacal anthology of Serling's original dramas and adapted stories from the masters of the macabre, including H.P. Lovecraft, Fritz Lieber, and Conrad Aiken. While Mr. Serling's name was indeed part of the show title, he was not the only creative influence behind the workings of the gallery. Veteran producer Jack Laird was a technical mastermind presiding over every intricate component of the show. Eccentric, at times reclusive, Jack Laird spent countless hours in the studio, drafting and redrafting scripts for the oftentimes bizarre 
and outrageous series. He poured his heart and soul into every aspect of Night Gallery. Jack was a very strange, talented man. You know, Jack was the guy the studio always called Friday night when they had uh, a, a sort of a real emergency. They'd give him a pilot or a script on Friday night, and he he'd come up with a, a very good rewrite on Monday morning, but he always was locked in his office. He hated confrontations. He didn't like to go on the set. He didn't like to talk to actors. He lived at the studio. He was very well known around the studio as a fixer, uh, that is, someone who would uh, take a, a, a script that was uh, lacking in some area, they'd put it under Jack's nose, he'd come back.